Uh, which one is working? Um, right. Okay. It's it's fine. I will use the keyboard. I don't want to do the next slide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so hi, I'm Xiao. Uh, I'm uh, I'm currently at uh, Boston University and MIT as a postdoc. I will join Northwestern in a few months as an assistant professor. So today I'm going to talk about. Uh, Efficient and secure multi-party computation from uh, fixed key block ciphers. So we have uh, fixed key block ciphers in the title. Probably everybody like will wonder. Probably okay. So probably the main topic of this talk is going to about efficiency. But actually no. So uh, our focus is security. Like uh, why everybody is trying to optimize using different kind of tricks and heuristic. Uh, so our main focus is actually taking a step back and see like what's the implication of all this kind of heuristic and optimizations and how to make them actually secure. Uh, to give uh, everybody some uh, more ideas, let me first uh, kind of uh, partition the work of MPC into few layers. Well, uh, the, like uh, at the top is layer is like applications where we build different kind of uh, practical systems for like different kind of use and then the, in the, the lower level is kind of some kind of port protocol, build, protocol and uh, building blocks. Like let's say we have Goblin, we have oblivious transfer, we have like a sequential like space kind of protocol, we have uh, all different kind of stuff uh, that I listed here. And then like uh, one layer below this, uh, like uh, some kind of like uh, lower level stuff like uh, assumptions, models, uh, some metric key primitives like uh, that, 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 we need, that we need to build all this kind of fancy stuff. And then at the very big, at the very bottom layer is the implementation where we need to choose a way to instantiate all these kind of primitives uh, which will be used to build the next layer which will be used to build the applications. Um, so over here we mainly focus on symmetric key primitives with like a, and like a, the, in, the interplay between protocols and the symmetric key primitives and the interplay of how these symmetric key primitives are actually done in practice in the implementation. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let me first give some overview. So uh, so again, like MPC, it's it's like uh, it's moving far very very fast from theory to practice. Like a, a lot of startups, a lot of money, and everybody is trying to build something that is that can work, that can perform, that, that can run efficiently, and like. Uh, and like as every cryptographer said, like don't roll your own crypto. But in practice, when we like uh, when we build MPC protocols, in many times we actually roll our own crypto to make it efficient. So there's actually a gap. Like uh, let's say when we wrote, write a paper, we have we say that okay, so blah 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 is going to be uh, let's say random oracle. And then like and then in practice, like uh, well, how it is instantiated is uh, like another story. Sometimes it's just like it's it's going to be ignored in the paper. Uh, I, th I thought Yuval has a question. Oh, okay. Sometimes, like, uh, it's usually ignored in the paper and in the implementation. It's really up to, it's really some ad hoc choice on, like, uh, on like, uh, like uh, based on the performance. Like, let's say, some, what, what kind of, uh, let's say, uh, instantiation is going to give us the best performance. And that part is usually not proven. Uh, so, uh, so it's it's actually a very big uh, it's a very big problem, and we mostly focus uh, in this work on hash functions used in various part of the protocol. Like uh, we want to ask questions like uh, what properties that are actually need, needed for this kind of hash functions, like how they are implemented in existing implementations, whether they are secure, and how and is there any way to get better efficiency um, to do them. Uh, so, uh, so one of the like uh, most uh, like uh, in, like uh, impacted way of uh, building some kind of uh, conceptually hash function is based on fixed key block ciphers. Uh, this got uh, widely known to the applied uh, crypto community mostly because of the just couple uh, uh, by Blair et al. Like uh, six years ago in Oakland, uh, thirteen. So they actually propose that we can actually build very like uh, they, they propose that we can build a goblin scheme based on fixed key block cipher with uh, uh, securely. Uh, the main motivation is that the fixed key block cipher is much 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 more uh, efficient than let's say a uh, hash function call. Uh, so uh, it's like uh, it's probably like uh, it's not very easy to convince everybody without uh, showing the numbers. So let me first show some numbers on some existing. Like uh, building blocks that, um, uh, and the performance. So over here, 
uh, so like uh, so we have uh, construct we have the call we have the like a uh, performance for different hash functions AES with the key scheduling uh, fixed key AES and XRP XRP is a uh, recent work that uh, XR uh, that shows that if you have two random permutation and you XR them that's a random oracle of the same size uh, so all the numbers are shown and this XRP is instantiated using two fixed key AES. So the numbers shown over here are in terms of number of CPU cycles, and uh, and and like because uh, like many of the many of these uh, implementations will benefit from pipelining. So I also show the uh, show the performance in terms of batch size. We can see let's see if we want to call some of them like in batch of eight. Actually, uh, AES is kind of uh, it's it's like uh, 50 times faster than SHA-256. Um, uh, for example, if we take AES and the SHA-256, AES has 10 round. So in the AES uh, 128 has 10, 10 round. So in the, in, the, in the best case, I, I can expect a latency of 10 yeah. in some sense. Maybe it's very difficult to design in a game that's hardware for MPC purposes. Uh, would things look different or is it still... Uh, uh, I feel like uh, fixed key AES is kind of close to uh, the dream stuff, yeah. Because like uh, I mean, uh, using SHA-256 is kind of overkill anyway. Yeah. But I guess yeah. if your point is that fixed key AES is not compared to the fixed key, but fixed key AES. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say fixed key AES is not always. Uh, some use of fixed key AES is always not is not safe. If you use fixed key AES properly, it's actually safe. I see. But I see. I mean, but uh, yeah. But uh, like uh, in terms of whether there will be any other stuff, that's like uh, that's like a hardcore, like a symmetric key question. I would say. I'm not. Uh, Skylake does not. SHA-256, uh, so actually, uh, well, so I actually look at the CPU flex and all that stuff. So SHA-256 only, no, uh, SHA-1 has uh, hardware acceleration and it's only available on low-end CPU in Intel, not a high-end CPU for some, for some reason. Actually, I also found a paper where they actually benchmarked SHA-NI and the performance is like three times better than what's being reported over here. Because like it need, uh, yeah, hardware implementation of AES is uh, still better than hard. It's still much better, at least ten times better than hardware implementation of SHA and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mo mostly because SHA has like much more run than AES. Uh, like uh, I guess like uh, okay. Okay, yeah, you are. Um, so the XORP, this is using fixed key, two different versions of fixed key AES. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, 128 input, 128 bit output. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are these uh, uh, CPU cycles per bit of the message or for what? Oh, it's uh, uh, CPU cycles per call. Per call? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for example, for SHA, we need to do the digest and uh, need to hash and then compute the digest. But how long is the message? The message are mo mostly short, shorter than a block. Yeah, that's why it is slow. If we has like long, long messages, it's actually much better. Okay. Well, but in the, in the use of MPC, mostly we hash short messages. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, okay, yeah. yeah. Thanks for all the questions, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so here we mostly focus on OT extension and the gobbling. These two uh, important building blocks and see what's, uh, what's happening over here. Uh, so for, for so the summary is that uh, first, actually many of the implementations are not se are not secure. Some of them are not provably secure. Some of them require some specific implementation of let's say base OT and other stuff. And and for some others, we can show actually show ex explicit attacks on existing implementations. And then we also find uh, ways to like uh, to find some of some good abstractions of the hash functions that can make everything secure. 
and uh, and uh, like uh, show some some of the constructions uh, based on fixed key AES modeled as a random permutation and and show like how to construct actually efficient uh, uh, constructions. Uh, so our goal again, our goal is the security. We want to achieve like a, like a secure end-to-end -end systems for MPC protocols from the very big from the protocol to the like a very very bottom the implementation part. But it turns out that uh, because like uh, everything is proven and we have uh, everything can be reduced back to like a fixed key AES, we also achieve like uh, a lot of in, like a huge like uh, uh, performance improvement. Uh, that's what I will mention later. Uh, yeah. Uh, because of the time limit, I will mostly I will uh, I will mention some of the tags and the, the part for OT extensions and uh, some hash functions. I will ignore the the, the other parts related to gobbling and some circular correlation robust and uh, some other applications beyond gobbling and OT. You can see uh, you can check them at, in our paper. Uh, but like yeah, uh, actually I have this slide. So like uh, so like uh, let's say if I like what what about just use SHA. I mean, and, and I, as I showed in the previous table, that actually leads to like a, a lot, uh, a, like a very high uh, performance slowdown. I mean, and also like uh, we might want to, uh, for example, whether we can like uh, construct random oracles from uh, random permutation, fixed, let's say random permutations with a, like a larger domain that we can use. So this is actually a, a quite a difficult question. I mean. Like uh, it's kind of a, a kind of active uh, open question in the symmetric keys community. The latest one is the XRP construction that I mentioned. Uh, that was uh, that appeared last year in Eurocrypt. Uh, yeah. So let me start with the uh, current state of affairs. Uh, what's happening right now? Yeah. So again, we have. Uh, so I no, now I'm zooming in to the bottom three layer implementation, uh, primitives, and the protocols over here. And we have uh, oblivious transfer and uh, extension and gobbling. So we know that uh, oblivious transfer extension can be proven secure in the random oracle model, and gobbling can be proven secure in the random permutation model. And then in the implementation, for example, we can instantiate uh, random oracle as char and random permutation with fixed key. Yes, that's like uh, our choice of implementation. Well, over here, like uh, it actually already uh, already showed some kind of limitation. Let's say if I propose a new gobbling scheme. What, do, what can I do? I need, I need to prove everything from the random permutation model because there's no intermediate concept that I can use uh, uh, in this kind of picture. There are already some, some kind of attempt to use like, uh, some, uh, like a more standard uh, uh, assumptions, uh, like a standard assumptions uh, uh, for oblivious transfer extension and half gate. For example, like uh, in the original uh, OT extension paper by Yuval et al, Actually, we show that the oblivious transfer, the semi-honest version of oblivious transfer, can be uh, like uh, is secure, assuming that uh, we have a limited correlation robust uh, ro robust hash function, and then uh, and then the implementation uh, like there are like a lot of implementations choosing to instantiate that hash function using random permutation or directly assuming that the SHA is a uh, this kind of a pseudo random object. On the other hand, we also have say half gate that actually proposed a limited circular correlation robust uh, notion, and then show that uh, this, this notion can be instantiated from random permutation. Uh, so it turns out that uh, uh, this part uh, is problematic uh, in different kinds of uh, ways. Uh, so I, I, so I, will, I will not uh, talk about the half gate part, and I will mostly focus on this part, like why this is problematic. And uh, in order to talk about uh, that part, I need to first talk about uh, oblivious transfer and oblivious transfer extension uh, from the very high level. Well, uh, so this is oblivious transfer uh, ideal functionality. Everybody have seen it uh, twice, uh, uh, yesterday and today. So like, uh, so the receiver send a bit X and the uh, sender send two messages and the receiver get one of the messages. And then the OT extension is uh, one of the most amazing thing in MPC that allows us to uh, like uh, use a very small amount of OT to get like uh, a lot of OTs. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it's essentially like uh, one of the most important tool in like uh, in practical MPC. Uh, how it works is that we first uh, obtain some kind of weak OT extension or like uh, like a pseudo random correlation using Yuval's new term, and then we can bootstrap them to full OT extension where the messages are specified by the sender. 
So how it works is like a, a sender send, let's say a bunch of, uh, uh, I don't know, so, uh, so, so in the first phase, we run this weak OT with uh, some kind of correlation. And then, uh, and, and up to here, we don't have, like there's like, a, uh, so like this A and B is are not really messages. They are just some random correlation. And then when we like uh, when when the sender want to correct the correct these messages, sender will just send the hash of uh, some kind of combination XR with the message. And then th uh, this it serves like uh, uh, as the purpose of uh, like encrypting the messages using different kind of keys. Um, so in most of the constructions, this weak OT actually has uh, has uh, like it's not fully secure in the sense that the adversary can choose. Uh, let's say a malicious receiver can choose the value of bi, and the malicious sender can choose the value of ai. If a sender is malicious, then ai can be chosen by the adversary, and then bi is set according to ai and the, and the correlation. This is very similar to the pseudo correlation generator relaxed notion, the second, the second notion that you've all mentioned in, in this morning. So I changed these slides uh, in the morning, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's essentially, it's actually true, like in almost all OT extension uh, protocols, this is how it works. Uh, so now it's a problem of how to instantiate that random, that edge function uh, like that, that we need to use. Uh, if we instantiate edge as a random oracle, everything works perfectly. There's like, a, it's like everything just works perfectly and it's like a, the proof works very, very easily. And then you, in, uh, in, in the original OT extension paper, we also sh they also show that uh, some version of correlation robustness is, uh, works for some variant of OT extension. Not all, all variant, but some specific variant of OT extension. Uh, but in practice, now the problem is how this edge should be implemented in practice. Uh, anybody want to uh, like uh, give some like uh, conjecture or stuff like that? How edge is actually implemented? Uh, yeah, that's uh, probably the the best choice, uh, given that. Well, this is uh, how it is implemented. Uh, so there are a bunch of work uh, that actually implemented the uh, edge uh, x of i with uh, using a permutation. And we communicated with them, and uh, it turns out that uh, they, they, uh, they they mentioned that this is a bug. And uh, they are like, and in space 2, it was implemented as a uh, pi x x or x. Uh, so this construction, uh, was can be proven to be a one-way function, but uh, there's no more no more property that was proven for pi x x or s x or x, assuming that uh, pi is a random permutation. And then, like uh, so, in like there are actually like uh, like uh, people that are actually concerned about security more and use hash function, but they forget to put i inside of uh, the hash function. And uh, and even our own EMP actually <laughs> suffers from the tag in the sense that we actually use some uh, uh, fixed key uh, construction and stuff. And uh, well, obviously, like, all of them are uh, insecure. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, I mean, of course, H does not instantiate a random oracle. I mean, so let's say I have a weak OT functionality, and then I plug in this H inside of the, the rest part of the protocol, then the whole, por the whole OT extension protocol is not secure, and I can find explicit, explicit attacks. Okay, so you actually have, like, instructions that attack. Uh, yeah, but uh, there's a tricky part. part. The tricky part is that, uh, some of the attack, so like some of the attack does not work for certain implementation of weak OT, and the certain implementation of the base OT inside of weak OT. So it's uh, so now it really depends on how whether you implement the base OT with some extra property or not. Whether the, for example, the original uh, OT extension is fine, but if uh, it's an attack against some some of the proof and some of the implementation, uh, some of the proof, some of the implementation. Yeah. yeah. It's not like an attack as in like I can violate the privacy. For some implementation, you can, and I so the uh, so next slide I actually showed the one that you can actually uh, get the uh, stuff. Yeah. Well, this is uh, like the the easiest uh, one. Well, like if if it is pi of x and the pi is public. 
if pi, pi is a public random permutation, then it's invertible. Like adversary, everybody can call pi and inverse of pi. Then let's say if, uh, let's say if uh, uh, one of them is known to the receiver, then you can, like, uh, you can get uh, like, the other one easily. You mean, essentially, this is, like, uh, this, is ob this is obviously insecure. There's like a no, like, it's a period, period, yeah. Well, but like, uh, let me give some light on why others are not, are not secure. Let's say if I have a hash function that ignore i. And then uh, the problem is that uh, uh, in this, in this uh, functionality, recall that the adversary can pick bi. If, if the adversary pick bi such that I, I use same bi twice, then it will lead to a problem because, like, because i is not, uh, if i is not included, then the messages can be correlated. I can learn some kind of a correlation between two calls of the OT. So it's actually important to put i inside of the hash function uh, if the adversary can actually arbitrarily choose, P, choose bi. And then whether the adversary can arbitrarily choose bi or not, it really depends on how the weak OT is implemented, whether, like, uh, whether we implement base OT as a pure random and controlled OT and stuff. So and then it depends on the on the other function on the implementation inside of a weak OT, yeah. But like uh, like uh, in the like more, most general case where the adversary can arbitrarily pick bi, there's like an attack in just calling two OT. If like uh, if old weak OT is slightly stronger, you need, probably need a slightly more OT extension to launch the attack. Well, yeah. So. Uh, so it's it's bad. It's uh, it's really bad in some sense. Uh, so we want so you, so we want to fix uh, all this kind of stuff without sacrificing sacrificing the uh, performance. So essentially, what we what we do is that uh, we uh, we proposed and summarize a list of uh, pseudo random object that kind of sit in the middle between the protocols and the symmetric key stuff, uh, including some kind of like a correlation robustness, tweakable correlation robustness with circularity or without circularity. Uh, they, all of them are really just some uh, pseudo random object, and uh, they are like it's like uh, it's more or less along the line of uh, standard uh, assumptions. We do these are like they are not like really any kind of uh, idealized model. And then like uh, for the performance, we actually showed we like uh, we showed if we have a random permutation, how to instantiate this pseudo random object using a random permutation. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is probably not important. Oh yeah. So let me start with uh, correlation robustness. So this uh, this concept, uh, as far as I know, was uh, also proposed in the OT extension paper by Yuval et al., where they uh, where they actually propose a notion where uh, which is actually slightly uh, weaker than uh, our notion. So essentially, we, what we what we what we call as to correlate correlation robustness is essentially uh, if H is correlation robustness, then F uh, sub uh, k of x implemented in this way should be a pseudo random function. Uh, so the weak version defined uh, in, uh, in ARSZ uh, uh, allows arbitrary, like uh, the weak version defined in ARSA does not allow adaptive query to the, to the, to the uh, random function. And the weak, even weaker version uh, defined in Yuval's paper uh, does not uh, like uh, has a restricted uh, no, uh, has a restriction on the distribution of x. X, x has to be uniform in the uh, IKMP, and uh, in the in the fifteenth, uh, it does not allow adapt adaptivity. So in our uh, so in, uh, so he, over here, our notion we want we would like the kind of the strongest notion where we allow arbitrary arbitrary, arbitrary distribution on the input and any kinds of adaptivity on the function. And then the trickable uh, correlation robust is a, is a, like a, is a kind of a, a very similar concept in a sense that uh, it is trickable if uh, if we also have a trick. Uh, well, yeah, and the, and the even with a trick, this is a this is a pseudo random function with the trick and x. Uh, yeah, and again, it's a it's a strong definition. It allows adaptivity. It allows like it does not have restrictions on x or i. So, uh, so for OT extension, for the semi-honest OT extension, for the OT extension of secure against semi-honest adversaries, we already know that if H is uh, our correlation robustness, then it's a secure protocol. But for malicious case, we actually showed that if H, if we just replace H by a trickable correlation robust hash function, then like it's then we can actually prove security in a malicious setting. 
So the, so the problem now boils down to how to construct these hash functions efficiently. Well, I mean, of course, we can just, let's say, we can just, at that point, we can just assume that, uh, let's say, SHA-256 is a tickable circular correlation robust, tickable, tickable correlation robust hash function or like whatever we want, but uh, that would be, uh, that's an assumption that we can make, of course. Uh, so the idea is that we are going to, So essentially, if k is private, it's a pseudo random function from 2k bit to k bit. Um, 2k bit to k bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so like uh, this random permutation model is actually, so, uh, so it, it, this like uh, stems from uh, efficiency con uh, like uh, con considerations. Let's say if we have a AES, like one of the way to model AES is to model it as a, a ideal uh, ideal cipher. But that's like uh, uh, that's uh, that's a pretty strong assumption, and uh, like uh, it also has some uh, kind of uh... okay. Thanks. I thought I have uh, forty five minutes. Oh. I see, I see. Sure, sure. Let me not, not yeah. waste time anymore. Yeah, okay. yeah, sure. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we actually, I mean, we've got extra time, but it's only for them by half past. So, uh -huh. we're okay. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, like, uh, from a very high level, uh, random permutation is also an idealized model, uh, but it's kind of, uh, so there are, like, uh, like uh, certain advantages, uh, like, uh, compare random, uh, if we compare random permutation and the random oracle. So, first, the random permutation, it's like uh, it's kind of more efficient because like uh, we can let's say there are like plausible ways to instantiate. Uh, I mean, uh, like in some way that we are we, that we don't have any attacks again distinguishing random oracle random permutation against the fixed key AES. The best attack distinguishing uh, the best attack distingu distinguishing AES with uh, uh, ideal cipher works uh, only for nine rounds of AES. And that, uh, even that attack does not apply for the fixed key, for the fixed key setting. Uh, uh, and also like, uh, like, uh, like in, many, uh, and in many cases, when we use this random permutation, we do not really need to program this. So we are actually working in the so-called non-programmable random permutation model. Uh, yeah. uh, so let me just like uh, have the, like, uh, the conclusion over here. So, so we first show that uh, if we have a random permutation, then pi x or x or x is a secure uh, correlation robust uh, hash function with a concrete bound over there, where n is the size of the permutation. Uh, and uh, we also showed that uh, this is uh, like in some sense optimal in the sense that any hash function that is instantiated using like constant number of uh, permutation, like uh, the, there, there exists a band, there, there exists an attack that actually Essentially, it's a, like a kind of a matching a matching bound. So essentially, you cannot really do better if you if we want to construct a correlation robust hash function from a random permutation. And then we can also construct a, like a tweakable so a correlation robust hash function. Over here, uh, we actually need two permutation calls per uh, per hash function. Uh, it looks like we need three, but uh, a pi of x just need to be computed once. Uh, yeah, and the, and the bound is kind of similar with some higher constant. Uh, yeah, and uh, I mean, both this and the previous constructions are both like uh, proven using the edge coefficient technique uh, uh, known in the symmetric key community. Yeah. So putting it together, so essentially we can, uh, we can like uh, construct uh, secure and efficient OT extension protocols in the non-programmable random permutation model. Uh, yeah. And now, uh, so what about the efficiency? So the uh, top part of the table is the same as what I, what I showed before. Uh, so the new constructions are at the bottom. So CR uh, refers to correlation robust hash function. Uh, so for them, we need like two more cycles compared to the fixed key AES. And for the circular correlation robust, which where well, the key can also be like uh, XORed with the hash function, and it is, uh, then we just need one more cycles compared to the correlation robust. And for the tweakable circular correlation robust, we need an extra, a little bit more, but this is kind of uh, uh, understandable because we have two calls to pi. Uh, yeah. So in summary, 
there's a gap. There's a huge gap between implementations uh, and what we are be being able to prove and what's like uh, and, the, and the concrete uh, sec uh, security that we can we can show. Uh, so you know how to prevent them? Like uh, generally, we need uh, like a form of verification, like uh, to show that like kind of end-to-end -end security from the protocol to the implementation to and all the choices. And I actually like uh, so it's inspired by this work on the abstractions of the hash functions. We also we also be able to find like a concrete attacks on couple circuit implementations that actually break the circuit and get uh, like a. That can get uh, like uh, the delta in free XR, for example, using just two hundred dollars. And then we also like uh, construct, uh, like uh, inspired by this attack, we actually constructed uh, checkable circular correlation robust hash functions with beyond the birthday bound. That that is like uh, like uh, much better. And then uh, essentially like uh, like combining them, we actually get governing schemes uh, beyond the birthday bound. So stay tuned for this paper. Uh, yeah. Finally, the paper is available in that link. And uh, so for the, in terms of the code, it's actually already implemented in the unbounded attack uh, repo and in the uh, OT extension library that Alex mentioned yesterday and in EMP. And uh, thanks to Sam, uh, Alex, and myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's So you mentioned the XORP gives uh -huh. you a random oracle? Uh, yes. And that seemed to be more efficient than the uh, tweakable circular. So could you use XORP in place of the tweakable circular correlation robust function? Uh -huh. uh, so this XORP construction works by if we have two random permutation with k-bit input, k-bit output, if you XOR them, it's a k-bit input, k-bit output random oracle. But uh, for tweakable circular correlation robust, we need two k-bit input, or k plus log n, and a k-bit output. So you cannot directly use them. You need, you need a way to like expand, like a domain expansion in some way. Yeah. Okay, let's bring our speaker again.